But you spend the same amount of time with the children, correct? Yeah, I would say we spend about the same amount of time with them. Would you agree with that? No, I would say I'm with them more. No, you don't agree with that? Um, no, she takes them to school and, and picks them up. Might be two or three times a month I take them or pick them up. <laughs> I'm sorry, two or three times a month do you take them or pick them up? My husband is lazy around the house and with the kids. I take care of everything. What we're going to have for dinner, doing the grocery shopping. I take care of bills. I take care of the kids most of the time. I, I feel like the manager of the family, like I'm delegating. Doug, can you give the kids a bath? Can you put the kids to bed tonight? I feel like he doesn't think of this stuff on his own. My job is a lot more physically demanding. I'm, I'm exhausted when I get home from work. Is she breathing hard after she prints up a report because I'm breathing hard after I treat a lawn? And I didn't know she had a problem with it until now. Now I wonder what family we've got here today. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Brandy. And this is Doug, and we're the Doyles. We have three small children. Sarah is age five, Lizzie is age three, and Andrew is 20 months. These children are adorable. Brandy and I both work full time. I'm a lawn care technician. She's a leasing professional. Young parents are both working. We're the parents. They terrorize us. Stop it. Let him go. Lizzie, she's three and a half. She is our biggest problem, I guess you would say. She's a handful. She throws temper tantrums. She's just 100 miles an hour, 24 hours a day. You're going to pick every one of those up. Hey. Stop hitting me. My oldest, Sarah, she's five, and she is stubborn. She will fight until the end and fight until she wins. She got a hold of the scissors and decided that she needed a haircut. These children have crossed the line. Andrew is 20 months old. Andrew whines a lot. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, it's it's nothing but screaming kids. My word. We definitely don't know where we went wrong. Stop kicking me! We are close to giving up. We've tried everything. Super Nanny, please help us. You guys need a back to basics class. I'm on my way. Hello. Can I come in? Sure. <laughs> Please meet young Jo. I'm Brandy. I'm hoping that she sees that I am a young mother, 24 years old, and I I'm just inexperienced and just need some help. Introduce me to your brood here. This is Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Hello, sweetie. And Sarah. Hi, Sarah. You gotta shake my hand. You gotta shake my hand now. And then we got Lizzie, who's three. Hi, Lizzie. Are you gonna shake JoJo's hand? Wow, all three. Under five, that's a handful. Yes. Well, today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch you. So just please carry on with what you would normally be doing. Your partner's here or? Dad's at work. Soon after I arrived, it was time for Andrew to be put down for a nap, so I went over to the girls who were playing on the computer. <laughs> Tempers started to flare, and it hasn't been long. <laughs> it appeared that the girls had some sharing issues. <laughs> I don't allow Sarah to play upstairs when Andrew's napping. Ah, uh, me down. Mum got Sarah downstairs, but she didn't want to stay there. Right, I'm going to put the gate up at the top of the steps. No. Stop it. You don't climb over this. It's dangerous. No. You can go to your room, then. If you no. want to stay up here, you can go to your room. Stay. No. Okay, stay. No. I don't know what else to do. She wants it in a timeout. The, the, the first thing I'm thinking when I'm watching Brandy holding that doorknob and not allowing Sarah out of the room, what are you doing? Calm down. No. Sarah, calm down. And then she starts to have a conversation through the wall. Then she felt sorry for her, 
took her out of her room, brought her downstairs, and made more fuss than the whole thing put together. I don't like this. I don't like that. I cannot let you go up there. Your brother is taking a nap. Yeah. You can play on the computer yeah. later. But it didn't end there because Lizzie started to kick off. Not watching cartoons. Literally. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. Don't kick it. If you kick it and break it, then we'll never have TV. <laughs> Mum tackles discipline with kisses and tiggles. <laughs> Get no lesson is taught here. The children must be incredibly confused with what Brandy's trying to teach them. <laughs> Nothing. To keep the girls quiet, Mum sent them outside and I got a chance to speak to Mum alone. How much in control are you of their behaviour? I don't feel that I have any control over their behavior. They don't listen to me and they they hit me. That's embarrassing. So what's it like when you've got friends around? We don't really bring friends or anything around. We don't want them to act out in front of other people. I just don't want them to think that I'm a bad mom and I'm doing something wrong. That must be very isolating for you, though. I mean, you're a young mum. I don't even know who I am anymore. All I am is a wife and a mom. Um, that's all. That's all I am. She's not really enjoying motherhood. It seems all a little bit too overwhelming for her. And at the moment, she's not in a good place. And I just don't know what to do, how to change that. Later on in the day, Mum brought the girls inside, and I wanted to see what she had planned for them. <laughs> but what she had planned was nothing at all. So, do you just clean in the afternoon? Um, I clean all day. So it must be hard to deal with the children when you're cleaning all day? Yeah, but it has to get done. Are you bored? Mum spends a lot of time cleaning the house instead of her focusing her attention on the children. There's some wonderful games here for Andrew, but he's not playing with them. I think Mum has this little voice in the back of her head. It's like, clean, 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 clean. Because as she was going downstairs, she'd left the door open. And Andrew was, like, inches away from a very long staircase. So I just grabbed him before he took that leap down. And I just think it's incredibly dangerous and completely naive of Mum not to recognise what she needs to do in order to keep Andrew safe. I get home from work and Joe's at my house. Hi, Doug. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi. I knew what she can do, and it was definitely a sign of relief. Just after I met Doug, he composed himself for a few minutes, and then he made himself comfortable on the couch. Sarah, please stop kicking me. My dad sits on the couch a lot and watches TV. Why do you want to go play? The girls were trying desperately to get Dad's attention, <laughs> but he wasn't paying any interest at all. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I just kept thinking, wake up, Doug. You've got three children, and you haven't seen them all day. Go get the game, and you and Sarah can play. The girls finally gave up on Dad, and they started to play a game together. <laughs> But it turned chaotic. If you guys are gonna fight, I'm just gonna throw the game away. No! Then stop fighting. Just play it. Just play the game. There's a lot of chaos going on in the living room. Just put her in timeout. No. And Dad isn't managing that very well at all. I work hard. It's my break time to sit on the couch and not have to deal with life. I guess. I wanted to find out from Brandy and Doug who did what when it comes to raising their children. You're both working parents, mm -hmm. but you spend the same amount of time with the children, correct? Yeah, I would say we spend 
I'm about the same amount of time with them. Would you agree with that? No, I would say I'm with them more. No, you don't agree with that? Um, no, she takes them to school and, and picks them up. Might be two or three times a month I take them or pick them up. <laughs> I'm sorry, two or three times a month you take them or pick them up? My husband is lazy around the house and with the kids. I take care of everything. What we're going to have for dinner, doing the grocery shopping. I take care of bills. I take care of the kids most of the time. I, I feel like the manager of the family, like I'm delegating. Doug, can you give the kids a bath? Can you put the kids to bed tonight? I feel like he doesn't think of this stuff on his own. My job is a lot more physically demanding. I'm, I'm exhausted when I get home from work. Is she breathing hard after she prints up a report? Because I'm breathing hard after I treat a lawn. And I didn't know she had a problem with it until now. Whatever, we talk about that all the time. Actually, we don't. The pair of them start to argue about how they're raising their children. I don't get a break. I don't get to sit on the couch and watch TV. You if don't? I do, it's after the kids go to bed. It was rather awkward being in the same room with the pair of them whilst they were pointing the finger at one another and blaming each other for their situation. I don't know why we're going round and round and round yeah, about and this. And we, we will. Mommy! Does this happen often, what I'm seeing going on here? Yes. Yeah. She got a pretty good sense of what Brandy and I go through. Um, a lot of arguing, a lot of bickering back and forth. Does, does anything get resolved between the pair of you when you have issues? No, he just um, pretends that it didn't happen. If I didn't do that, it would never be resolved because you are the most stubborn person I've ever met. Does anything get resolved? No. Mm -hmm. It's time these two stop running around in circles. I need to sit Brandy and Doug down and talk about changing this situation. When I first arrived, I walked into a home that was spick and span. You provide a lovely home for your three children. But, You are a young couple. Where is the enthusiasm and the motivation where it should be? And that's the children. There is a complacency there and there is a laziness there. I don't feel that I'm lazy. I mean, I'm doing something. I'm cleaning up something. Do you hear yourself? You don't think you're lazy because you're cleaning, but you're lazy when it comes to dealing with the kids. Let's talk about discipline. Who's running this household here? They are. We try to put them down for, um, for a time out, and, and they just will not sit there. How do you get them to sit there? For a start, you recognize that you're the parents in the house. Lizzie yesterday, Brandy, was misbehaving. She didn't listen to you. And you actually went over to her and said, come on, Lizzie, and you tickled her. That's mixed messages. If she wasn't going to sit in time out, I was just trying to distract her from what she was doing, that way she, she would stop misbehaving. But what you do is, is set yourself up to fail the pair of you, so that when you do go upstairs and try to implement any form of discipline, it spirals out of control to the extent that you've got to hold a door. Let's talk about the structure of your day. Yesterday we spent more than 12 hours together with the children, but what quality time did they actually spend with you doing things where they were stimulated and having fun? I, I don't know. That's sad. That's really sad. my kids more than anything and I don't want to neglect them and Brandy Brandy I know that you love your kids and Doug I know that you love your kids but if you're gonna love your kids then let them see it and the way you show your kids that you love them is not just about making sure that they're looked after and fed and watered like a flower. 
but to give them you. Because that's what they want at the end of the day. They want you to. Joe made me feel like I don't spend enough time with them and I neglect them. It hurts me to think that it could be true. I don't want to neglect my children. Am I now looking at two parents who are prepared to accept what is going on in this house? Yeah. And are now prepared to put the hard work in and let's start changing it? Yes, please. Absolutely. Right, okay, let's get started. <laughs> The first thing I did was to place up a routine so both parents could take responsibility and know exactly what they are both going to do together. Let's run through this routine. All right, kids are at daycare through to the evening. But at four o'clock, Dad, I want you to pick up the kids from daycare. Yeah, Mom's got a big smile on her face. That is a big help. And at 4.30, Dad, you're home with the kids. My job is very physical. I like that hour and a half, two hours of peace that I get. Yeah, so I'm a little uneasy about having to pick the kids up. Doug stepped up. He picked the girls up from daycare. And to make sure he didn't fall straight back onto that couch, I set him and the girls up with some finger paints. Normally, I would be sitting on the couch right now watching a little little bit of TV and barking orders at them while, they're, while they were playing and things. And I haven't turned the TV on yet, and I, to be quite honest, I don't miss it. Say bubbles. Say, you want to eat it? <laughs> playing with the girls comes easy for Doug. He's just got to get off that couch. With what you've learned, you're unable to enjoy this time with him. And you're going to have this all the time now because you've been able to put so much into place in your own household where you're now enjoying your parenting and just enjoying being a father. That is really pretty. You want to put this on the counter and let it dry and I'll take it to work and hang it up. Yeah. It felt good to me. You know, I, I devoted my time to the kids and not just to the couch. So I proved to myself and the world that I can be a good father. If I tongue and cheek with Brandy, I'd like to say she is definitely Mrs. Bock. She likes to clean 24 7, and the frustration of not being able to get out that dustpan and brush was getting the better of her. I'm not very organized today. You mean you haven't spent so much time cleaning today? I don't know where anything is today. It's a good, good thing. Joe pretty much told me I cleaned too much, which shocked me. The house didn't need attention, the children did. So I told Brandy to go and find the children and have some fun with them. Girls, socks and shoes on. We're going to go outside and swing. I put the cleaning supplies down. I spent more time with the kids. You know something I know you guys would love to do? Play dress up with your makeup. This is the kind of time that mum should be putting into the kids, not the house. They had a great afternoon. It looks Whoa. like a candy. <laughs> candy break. Later on, while we were in the kitchen, Lizzie started playing with a fork in her mouth. Not very safe. What you don't want Lizzie to do is to be walking around with that in her mouth, OK, in case an accident happens. If you put that fork back in your mouth, you will sit in the naughty chair. And Lizzie didn't listen, so it was time for the naughty chair. You are sitting on the naughty chair because you did not listen to Mummy when she told you to take the fork out of your mouth. You're her mother. As she does as she's told. Okay. And if she doesn't listen to you, then there's a consequence that she's going to have to pay. What Brandy needs to learn is the basics of discipline. She's never set any boundaries for the girls before. She's going to do as she's told, Mum, because you're going to make a difference tonight. She got up again and again and again and again. After the first five minutes, I was worn out. I was tired. I was hot. Can we turn some air conditioning on in here? I'm just supposed to keep on and keep on. What's happening? It's just going to, I mean, this is going to go on all night. I don't have the strength and the Listen energy. Listen to me. You better find it. It was really tough for Mum. She's never followed through with discipline. And I was determined that today, that was going to change. Ah. What? Ah. Don't talk to her. And she will listen to you and do as she's told. <laughs> And 
Lizzie didn't like it, her behaviour escalated. Do not <laughs> fight me. Oh. I'm going. Go I, right? I just don't know how much longer I can do this. Uh, you're going to do it for as long as you need to do it. Why are you going to do that for your kids? Why? Because I love them. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go. Let's go. Exactly that. <laughs> After a two-hour struggle, Lizzie finally stayed in the naughty chair for three minutes, and then Mum asked for her apology. Would you like to tell Mommy you're sorry now? Nobody can hear. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I see why Joe did it. It was not about. It was just a fork. It was about being consistent and showing Lizzie who was boss. I love you. Mum's really afraid to have people over at the house because of the children's behaviour. It's going to embarrass her. You're so to build up their confidence, I told Mum and Dad to bring up some friends to arrange a play date. Adam, um, question. Do you and your wife be interested in coming over for a play date? Children need to learn how to share and how to play with other children. Hi! Look at Gracie, she's gotten so yeah. big since we've seen her. I was excited. I thought Joe's here. You know, we're going to do it right. We're going to be OK. Hi, Joe. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Adam. Hi, Adam. Nice to meet Things you. Things were going really smoothly and thought it was going really well and we're going to be able to do this now. And then suddenly, Lizzie didn't check and her behavior got worse. <laughs> we do not kick. We do not kick. <laughs> When Andrew puts it down, then you can get it back, OK? No hitting. Even in company, Mum had to put Lizzie on the naughty chair. And as if that wasn't enough, Sarah followed suit, and Dad had to put Sarah on the naughty chair, too. You do not pinch me. <laughs> we have our friends over, and we have to end up putting our kids in the naughty chair. And I thought, here we go, the embarrassing part and all hell broke loose. <laughs> and their behavior just escalated to the point where they were just swearing. Now I'm starting to worry about my four-year-old and the, the dirty word. Over because of the way our kids act. Well, I'm sorry, and I really hope that we can do this again. Oh, we will. Finally, our friends ended up leaving because they didn't want their son to hear that kind of language. Just swearing, okay, is to get a reaction. But I stuck with Brandy and Dog and said to them, just keep going, and they did. The timer starts again. Tell me that you're sorry. Sometimes I don't like to say I'm sorry. Now I want you to say that you are sorry to Mummy for that behaviour. Sorry. Today, it didn't go as well as they hoped, but if Mum and Dad can follow through with the discipline, then play dates are going to get better for them. I want to hear you tell me that you're sorry. So far, OK, hug and a kiss. OK, hug and a kiss. The girls certainly tested their parents today, but Mum and Dad, they set some boundaries. So play dates are only going to get better. Brandy and Doug don't spend enough quality time with their children, and I think they need to realise that they don't know their children as well as what they should. OK, I've got you both here because we're going to play a little game. And this game is how well do you know your children? OK, question number one. What is Lizzie's favourite colour? Blue. Wrong. What is your favourite thing to do with Daddy? And I asked Sarah. Be pushed on the swing? Wrong. Wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. I bet it was wrestle. What is your favourite thing to do with Mummy? And I asked Lizzie this question. 
Help mommy clean. <laughs> oh, you are wrong. <laughs> it made a game out, out of our embarrassing failures as parents. Next question. What flavor is Lizzie's favorite ice cream? Five chocolate. Yay, about time. <laughs> I thought, oh crap, we need to really get on the ball and, and get to know our kids. Unfortunately, I won't be giving you the answers to the questions. And for homework, you're going to find out a lot about the girls. And when I come back, I'm going to ask you some questions again. Sound good? Yeah. Brilliant. Judges, go in there, have a big hug. Big hug, see you in a couple of days. Keep supporting one another, all right? Remember, it's about sticking together, OK? And I will see you when I get back. I am confident that I can do the techniques that she has taught me. I'm a little nervous, so we'll see how it goes. Bye! I've given Brandy and Doug a lot of information over the past couple of days, so I hope they remember it all and use it. What's your favorite snack? Strawberries and grapes. Ah, oh, look, Mum and Dad are doing the homework I gave them. Sarah's favorite number is? Yeah! The girls are loving this focused attention. What's Lizzie's favorite snack? Bananas. Bananas? What's your favorite thing to do with Daddy? Wrestle! Wrestle! Yes. Now that's quality time spent with the kids. Good dad, you're off the couch and playing with the children. <laughs> oh no, look at Andrew. Oh. Make sure you Andrew's up on the table. That's not good, is it? Now, that was a close call. You've got to keep an eye on him. Are you on yet? Alone again. Doug, there could be knives in that drawer. Hi, how are you doing? Sarah's going to be so excited to see you. Good for you. You've invited friends over again for the girls. Share all of your toys with her. I know, but what if they hit the wall? Everybody off the bed. Sarah, this is your warning. This is your warning. You need to get off the bed. Mommy asked you to get off the bed. I don't want to do this now. Mom, you could have resolved this without using the naughty chair. It's a bit harsh. Oh, uh, me do. I will get the naughty chair because I was on the bed. I used to get to the naughty chair. So she didn't listen to Mommy when Mommy asked her to get off the bed. No. Yeah, we all make mistakes sometimes. My friends were playing on the bed. I had to stay on the floor. Brandy, you've already said that Sarah can't go on the bed, so why are the other girls on it? You're being inconsistent. Here it goes, then. What's your favourite snack? Strawberries and grapes. What's your favourite thing to do with Daddy? Wrestle! Wrestle! Hey, that is just absolutely delightful to watch. Well done. I set you guys this homework and you follow through. It's brilliant. Andrew's on top of the table. So, this is skydiving now. <laughs> um, no, as soon as I noticed, I ran over to get him. If you didn't know now, you do have to grow eyes at the back of your head mm -hmm. and be very aware that you have three children. Okay? Sarah, this is your warning. This is your warning. You need to get off the bed. You don't want them to jump on the bed, then all you have to do is say to Sarah, I don't mind you and the girls sitting on the bed, but please no jumping. And walk out the room and allow them to have fun together. <laughs> but more to the point, you then become naughty chair happy. It's not so effective because Mum and Dad put me in the naughty chair for the most silliest of things. I don't think Joe thought we did as well as we thought we did. There were some areas that definitely need improvement that she was able to point out. 
Are we ready to move on to the next stage? Mm -hmm. Right, I'm very excited to do so. Let's go then. Brandy came out of the DVD session a little unclear of when she should and shouldn't use the naughty chair. I am just having trouble, I guess, judging the what deserves a naughty chair and what doesn't. A lot of situations can be resolved without using the naughty chair, and that's what I'm going to show Brandy today. OK, so, Brandy, what's going to happen now naughty. is you're going to teach the children how to share the stencils together between them, all right? Mum and the girls in the playroom, one table, two children, two pieces of paper. Put your paper up here. Put your paper up here. Lizzie, if you want to do the stencils with Sarah, you need to stop your temper tantrum and you can come to the table and we can do stencils and we will have fun. Mum's instincts were correct. She's looking to resolve the situation without using the naughty chair. I honestly don't know what to do because if you put both of these papers down like I did, mm -hmm. That should be fine, right? Look, Four. look, watch. Like, like exactly, that. Sarah. Sarah recognizes what needs to happen, and she very smartly moves the table around so that each child can have an end of the table. Fantastic. How smart is that? But Mum should have thought of that too. There you go. Look at that. I didn't even think of that, and Sarah did. She's so smart. Good job, Sarah. Well, that was figured out, but I wanted to give Brandy a little test to see how she would do in other situations. The children are playing, you've got another five kids here, and all of a sudden, they're taking the pictures. There we go. And you walk up and you go, where's all the pictures gone? Naughty chair or not? Quick thinking. No. You wouldn't give a naughty chair because, OK, they've taken the pictures off the wall, but they're not being destructive. This is no big deal. Okay. If they were writing on the wall, or if they were, give me an example. Fighting. Then you would deal with it appropriately. Okay? Right, okay, let's go down to the next one. Joe took me through to different rooms and gave me different scenarios. It's cuddle time, quiet time where you're reading and you've got the girls snuggled up to you either side and Andrew's right on your lap. And as you're reading a story, you give another book to Andrew. And Sarah keeps snatching that book off of Andrew. What do you do, naughty chair or not? No, no naughty chair. That does warrant a warning. OK. Because they're not sharing. What's the lesson you're trying to teach your children? Sharing. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the next one. OK. We're sitting down and we're having lunch. And Andrew's having a field day. His hands are going in the milk. And he's looking at it and he's fidgeting around on his plate. Naughty Great. chair or not? For Andrew? Yeah. No. Well, you did get that one right, OK, with Andrew, because of his age. Brandy caught on, and I think she started to see the bigger picture. So now she won't be so naughty chair trigger happy. So remember, it's about being in control of a situation and not controlling your children. And that's a big life lesson. Being left on our own brought up a lot of new questions and Joe's reinforcement is definitely helping with that. The kids have worked really hard and they deserve a night out. So I've arranged for a babysitter to come and look after the kids. There's one rule for the parents in being able to come to a coffee house and chill. You talk about yourselves and anything else but the children. It's nice. You look really pretty. Thank you. Elizabeth. <laughs> I'd like to see a movie. Too soon. Are we only allowed out, what, every six months? <laughs> the babysitter's not gonna want to babysit all the time. <laughs> I was overwhelmed. And I didn't know how Doug and Brainy was gonna react. And I didn't want them to be mad at me. <laughs> so you guys ready? I suppose we better get back, right? Yeah. Tea time with the kids and stuff. Little did we know while our parents were out that Lizzie was making the babysitter's life hell. Hey, what's going on? When we came home, I immediately felt like I shouldn't have went out. Like I had failed in my job as a parent and 
given that job to somebody else to take care of when I should have been the one doing that. <laughs> this is why we don't go out and leave the kids with the babysitter. Explain what's happening so that we can deal with this situation. Oh, my word. I just felt so, so sorry for Deanna and what she'd gone through. She's pinched Andrew, she has bit him, she has bit me, she has bit Sarah. I'm sure Lizzie thought that she got away with her behaviour. Fat chance, I wasn't letting her off the hook. That is absolutely appealing. You are on the naughty chair. Stay because calm. Because you behaved naughty while we had a babysitter. Brandy was very concerned with the thought that maybe Lizzie was regressing and behaving worse. What she's done is she's seen Deanna and she's thought, oh, I'm going to try now and see if Deanna's going to take this or whether she's going to put me on the naughty chair. Joe definitely put my mind at ease. She let me know that, no, this is just a new situation. And Lizzie was testing if mom would follow through because it happened with the babysitter. Say that you're sorry. Sorry. For a woman who never even implemented discipline in her house, I'm really impressed that Brandy has got the confidence now to follow through with the naughty chair. And she's doing fantastic. You fought Deanna and you didn't listen to her. You need to tell her you're sorry for that. For your behavior. For your behavior. I accept her apology, but now no more misbehavior like that I because. Speak for I. I will not. I will not have any more behavior like that. So can I have a big hug because JoJo's going home now? I wish Jojo could stay forever. Remember, no hurting one another. Okay, you play nicely together. We kiss and hug our sisters. Exactly, and you need to do that with your brother and everybody else. Bye oh, bye, sweetie. For two young parents who didn't know where to turn and didn't know what to do, have learned a lot. Keep communicating, get out as a couple, but at the same time, I want to see you spending that quality time with your family. Let me give you a big hug, Brandy. Listen, you take care, OK? Thank you so You're, much. You are welcome. I owe Jo everything. She has changed our life. Take care. Take care. You are welcome. I was really worried about whether or not her techniques were going to work on, on our family in particular, but they really have, and, and I'm really grateful for that. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I leave this house feeling very satisfied that I've been able to make two young parents a lot wiser over a short period of time. My whole family life has changed. Our household is happy, and things have improved so much. Every day is better than the day before. OK, hold your arms up like this. Joe made me realize that the family I wanted was here all the time. It's a baby. Doug and I work together, and we actually have house rules now. Look, look. <laughs> the girls are sharing, and they do as they're told. Andrew, you pet the man? It's like a baby. Good boy. job, Andrew. We're not kids raising kids any longer. We are two adults that have put our foot down and decided that we are in control of the situations that go on in the house. I am looking forward to the future, and I am looking forward to being the kind of dad that my kids deserve to have. Look, Sarah pet the pony. My mommy and daddy play with me more. My kids are sharing. They're saying, please. They're saying, excuse me. It's great. Here she goes. I have the family that I've always dreamed of having. Oh, wow. I'm looking forward to raising awesome kids.